What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media bringing you yet another Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle today against none other than the creator of the PU tier himself, Done Deal. Um, yeah, he doesn't really need an introduction, but I'm gonna, I have some explaining to do about this battle just because, um, I was kind of a little bit of an asshole and brought, uh, all kind of o OP stuff, if you want to call it that. I mean, I know it's PU, but I have some explaining to do. Before we get into that, though, just want to remind you guys that as long as this video reaches that magical number of 50 likes, I will continue to bring you those double daily Wi-Fi battle uploads and all that fun stuff that I like to do and that you guys like and, you know, everybody enjoys it and it's just a great time. Now, uh, having said that, if you don't know what PU is, I will leave a link in the description below so you guys can go check it out. And the main reason that I'm posting this battle is to share this with you guys because I've never done a PU battle before. This is my first crack at it and I didn't realize that I really didn't have that many Pokemon that were PU to choose from in the first place. It just so happened that these were really all I had, um, and it just so happens that they're kind of the cream of the crop in the PU tier. It's basically the NU of NU, so the things that really didn't get used in NU, which is the lowest tier, are PU. So as you can tell, we've got some not fully evolved Pokemon on his team, just got some pretty bad Pokemon. I mean, I don't, they're not bad. It's not that they're not bad, it's just that they're not used. So that's just what it comes down to. Um, but it is definitely a thing. It's getting more popular. I wanted to share this with you guys so that if you guys want to try it, um, that maybe we can get some more people involved because it's just, it's really awesome. You get to see some awesome sets, some awesome Pokemon that you would never see in the higher tiers. It's just really so much fun. So, uh, you're just going to have to forgive me for bringing some OP stuff. He brought an amazing team. Uh, he's bringing the Unpheasant, Chinchow, Ghastly, Solrock, Torterra, which I have no idea how Torterra could possibly be PU because it's amazing. I've used it in OU. Craziness that it's uh, PU. And Mantine. So a lot of interesting things going on over there. If I had to guess, um, I know Unpheasant gets Wish. So I'm going to say that that's kind of like a Wish passing, like bulky utility set. I'm not positive. It has decent attack as well, though. Chinchow can do a couple of different things. It could be, you know, T-Wave. It could have Heal Bell. It's just... It's iffy. I mean, with the Eviolite, it could be a pretty good tank. I know Dundeal also likes to do Charge Beam, Rest Talk, Shenanigans. It's not Shenanigans. It's actually a really great set. Uh, so that could be a potential. Need to watch out for that. Ghastly is actually very, very powerful, so I do need to be careful there. Uh, but it is frail, so I might be able to just, you know, get rid of it quickly. But that's what I'm going to be hoping for. Soul Rock, have no idea. I've never seen one of them before. Torterra can do a bunch of different things. Mantine can do several different things. I've seen Assault Vest. I've seen just a tanky set. We will see. I'm kind of drawing this out longer than it needs to be, though. On my side, I've got a couple of poison types in Arbok and Muck. So Muck is actually going to be my specially defensive wall. It's not Assault Vest. It has uh, the Black Sludge and just an interesting set of moves. But uh, I'll get into that later. I've got Rotom Frost and a uh, Torterra of my own which is physically defensive, not attacking, which is what his is going to be. Grand Bull, which is Assault Vest. Coil Arbok, which I don't think I mentioned. And then a Glaceon, which is just like a Hail Set with Substitute, Blizzard, and Hidden Power Ground. So it's all around just a very, very strange battle, but it is so much fun. And I can't wait to get some more Pokemon bread that are not, you know, as OP in this in this tier and uh, try some different things out because that's really what it's about. Really just about having fun. So he's going to start off with his uh, Unpheasant and switch right out because he has a bad matchup with his Glaceon and he's not sure, you know, entirely what it's going to do. I'm going to set up a sub predicting that switch, so that worked out well for me. And uh, the Chinchow is just going to go straight for that Scald. And I wasn't sure if that was going to break my sub or not, but he may just not be invested if he's a Charge Beam set, so I don't really know. Uh, but it does not break the sub, so I'm able to set up the hail, which is great, because that's going to get a couple of things going for me. One, going to be able to hit Blizzard whenever I want, and I am carrying the Icy Rock of all things, so this is going to be lasting for eight turns, by the way. Um, and it's also going to activate my Ice Body, so that is fantastic. He went for the Charge Beam there, and that did not connect. I, I, just, I feel bad about that. It's like 90% accuracy, so that is unfortunate. Going to hit him. With a critical hit, Hidden Power Ground, so this, the Hacks is pretty bad right now, I'm not going to lie, the Hacks is really, really bad. He just got, 
he got screwed on that turn, to be honest. So he pretty much is forced to go for a rest here. And any momentum that he could have had, you know, coming out of the gates here is all gone just because of that one turn. And that just, that sucks. I know what that feels like. And it happens to me on a regular basis. So I have to say, you know what? Sorry about that, man. I'm going to go for the blizzard here. I really predicted that he might switch. And I get another crit with the blizzard. So this thing's definitely tankish, judging by how much the crits are doing. But he's just getting destroyed by the hacks right now. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. So he's going to go for the sleep talk here. So this is, in fact, the charge beam, sleep talking, rest talking, whatever you want to call it. He's going to go for the scald there. So we got a good draw, which is which is good. That's going to break my sub, finally. I feel like I've been behind that sub forever. So I set it up on turn one. It is now turn five. Um... So I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Ground, and that is going to do a decent amount of damage, and yeah, he's in a bit of a bind here, bit of a bind, and he just was put behind by the hacks, I don't really know what else to say about it. This is a really cool set though, I mean, I think this could even work for Lantern in a higher tier, so I might just steal that, or some variation of it, might change it around a little bit, but he's going to go for the Charge Beam here as he wakes up, at least I think he wakes up, can never tell because Chin Chao doesn't have eyes really. No, he's asleep. How would I know? How would I know? It's not like his eyes are open. Um, anyway, Blizzard and Hail Damage is finally going to take out this poor little Chin Chow, which just got really screwed over, to be honest. So, I do feel bad about that. On top of the fact that I'm bringing a team that's kind of annoying to face. So, sorry about that. In comes, the, I don't even want to try to pronounce that nickname, but uh, the Soul Rock. And he's going to pull a double to try to bait me into switching into something. And uh, I guess it's going to work, because I am going to switch out as well into my Atlas, which is my Torterra. I'm not sure if that's really what he wanted me to switch in there, but um, this Atlas slash Torterra will be kind of okay for going up against Mantine and Solrock. I mean, I do have to be wary of that Ice Beam, and at this point, I'm like, you know what, it's not worth it. He probably does have the Ice Beam, let's switch out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch into my special wall, which is my Muck. Look at that HP, 212 at level 50. That's crazy. He does, in fact, have the Ice Beam. So I'm still not sure what kind of set this is. It could very well be Assault Vest. But, um, yeah, that is that. So we're both going to take the Hail Damage because the Hail just lasts forever with that Icy Rock. But I do negate that kind of with my Black Sludge. I'm noticing that he doesn't have any Leftovers Recovery. So, you know, it still could potentially be that Assault Vest set that I keep thinking it is. In comes Democracy his Torterra, and I'm going to Toxic him on the Switch, so that is kind of good for me, because I really don't know if he has anything that can remove status. I don't recall seeing anything that has Aromatherapy, and uh, Heal Bell, really, I think the only thing that might be able to learn it would be the Chin Chow, and that's dead, and it didn't have it anyway, so that is that. We're going to switch out here, because Earthquake is going to be a thing. So I'm going to switch into my own Torterra. So we have some Torterra on Torterra action going on right now. There's the Stone Edge. And he predicted me to switch into something else. Something with Levitate. I don't even remember what's on my team. But uh, that was, I guess, the safest move at that point. So uh, that's what he went for. And I take that like a champ because I am physically defensive. And it's not very effective anyway. Now he's going to go for the Wood Hammer. And I'm still trying to figure out at this point what set it was. It does a lot of damage, but Torterra is just naturally very powerful. Um, there is the Life Orb, though, so this is going to be an offensive one. It might be Rock Polish. I've seen that before. Uh, so I'm going to set up a sub here because that's just what I'm going to do. I am actually a sub seeding set because because why not? Torterra can do a lot of different things, and sub seeding is one of them. So he's going to wood hammer me right right now, um, and that is definitely going to break the sub, because we saw how much damage that was going to do. And um, the main reason that I subbed was that I really thought he was going to switch out there, you know, predicting, I don't know, predicting, it doesn't matter what, but I just thought he would try to reset the toxic, you know, counter and all that stuff, so, oh well. I'm going to go for the earthquake here, because this democracy is pretty much as good as dead, and I do have speed, so, goodbye. Goodbye, Torterra. That is a huge threat out of the way, because if he was able to get a rock polish up, if he had it, I just, I would have been in huge trouble, because without Torterra, I would have nothing that could take its attacks. To be honest, it would just destroy everything. Again, which is the main reason why I, I have no idea why this thing is PU. Craziness. I'm going to go into my Grand Bowl here, because I'm not sure what this thing wants to do. It could be special or physical, to be honest. 
And uh, he's just going to go for that Zen Headbutt. And I did get the Intimidate off, so I can take that kind of sort of okay. That thing might be banded, to be honest. It really might. So that's... I mean, only in PU will you see a banded Soul Rock. How cool is that? Going to go for the Crunch there on the Switch. So now at least he knows that I'm carrying that and that I will be able to deal some decent damage to that Soul Rock. So that is a bit unfortunate because it does nothing to this Unpheasant whatsoever. That has to be physically defensive. He's probably running Impish, you know, max HP, max defense with uh, just some utility moves. Maybe Tailwind, Roost. Obviously, he's just showing the U-turn here as I switch into my Rotom Frost. Not sure what his other move would be. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, going to go for the Volt Switch as he switches into his... Again, not going to pronounce... Not going to try to pronounce that nickname because it's not going to work out. So that takes so much, so much damage from the uh, Volt Switch. Because I was, in fact, uh, Specs and not Scarf. So there is the Stone Edge. Atlas is able to take that kind of, sort of, okay. And I'd have to say that this thing is banded. It just it did a lot of damage, even to Torterra. So he's going to switch out here. And in comes Justine, which is the Unpheasant yet again, as I set up a Leech Seed, and I don't believe I've shown that to him yet, I don't think. I don't remember if I did. But uh, regardless, yeah, there is the recovery for the Leftovers, and this puts us in a good position because if he's at max HP, I'll be getting a decent amount of recovery back each turn, so that is just, that is great news. And if he's Utility, he won't be able to do too much to me either really won't be able to hit me with much. I don't know what his attacking move is, if he has one other than U-Turn, but he's going to go straight for the Tailwind here. So his team is going to be a lot faster now, and I need to watch out for that. But I'm going to take this opportunity to set up a substitute. And because of the fact that, you know, all he has is U-Turn from what I've seen, I don't even know if U-Turn is going to be able to break my sub, given the fact that I am physically defensive. And he has no investment in his attack on top of that. So there's my lefty's recovery, there is the Leech Seed recovery. You know what, I really want to try an Unpheasant. I feel like it has a lot of offensive potential as well, especially because it got a buff to its physical attack, I believe, this generation. I think it got its uh, physical attack stat upped by a little bit. I don't even know what it was last generation, maybe right around 100. It's not like crazy good, but it has some potential. Gonna go for the Wood Hammer here. Because that is the only thing that can do damage to this thing. I'm not carrying the Stone Edge because I've got Elite Seed and Substitute. And Earthquake is my other moves, so obviously those are going to do nothing. So pretty much just forced to go for that Wood Hammer there. It does okay damage, but he takes that very nicely, to be honest. And if anything, I'm just relying on the Elite Seed here to help me out. I really don't think that another Wood Hammer is even going to take him out. He's probably going to survive that as well. So what he's going to do here is go for the U-Turn. Does not want to give up this... Unpheasant just yet, and yeah, the U-turn is going to be super effective, so it does break the sub. I forgot about that. For some reason, I thought that ground was um, able to resist a bug, but that is not the case. It's neutral. It's absolutely neutral, and it is super effective on grass, so I'm just a little bit crazy, I guess. Going to go for the wood hammer on the switch into Henry, and that does not take it well whatsoever. Not at all, and uh, he is going to get the wish, so he's going to get most of his HP back, which is a bit unfortunate, but I'm not too too worried about this thing, because I know, obviously, Torterra is going to go down, and I really don't have any other choice, but I should be able to handle it. Um, as he goes for the Surf there, that's going to finish off the Torterra. There goes the Tailwind, but I can come in with Rotom and just, you know, destroy it. So he's going to switch out here because, I guess, obviously, the, the Volt Switch is pretty, pretty freaking obvious, so his best move here is to go ahead and Fodder off the Soul Rock. He really doesn't have any other use for it. Well, I mean, I guess he could have a use for it, but it just, he was looking at what was most important, and he decided that the Soul Rock was not uh, as important as the others. So, going to switch into Muck here and get some Black Sludge recovery, which is great. That'll almost get me back up to full health. Not quite, but close enough. In comes the Ghastly, and I am legitimately scared of this thing. He's going to pull another double here. And switch right out into his Justine, which is the Unpheasant. As I go for the Fire Punch, because why not? Why not just go for the Fire Punch? A physical attack was going to do a lot to Ghastly, regardless of whether or not he was Eviolite. It you know, wasn't necessarily going to just kill him in one hit, but it would do some decent damage. Ghastly's very, very frail. So, switching into the Justine there was a great 
option for him because just, you know, it took it very well. So I'm going to go for the poison jab here to try to do some decent damage to this thing, try to get it poisoned, neither of which really happens. And he's going to get some lefties recovery. And now he has to choose whether to fodder it or not. And he's just going to fodder. He's going to go for the pluck. And the Thunderbolt from Muck is going to finish this thing off. I know, I'm running a very, very strange set on this Muck. Uh, it's Black Sludge, completely specially defensive, with uh, max HP, max special, special defense. I think it's a calm nature, and then uh, just mixed attacking moves with Poison Jab, Fire Punch, and uh, Thunderbolt. So just very strange. He's going to go for the Destiny Bond here, and I'm just going to go for the Thunderbolt. I don't even know if that's going to kill or not, but no, it's not. It is not even going to come close to killing. It does about 50%. So he's just going to go for the Destiny Bond again. He really has nothing to lose, and he needs to get rid of this muck. It would be the smarter thing for me to do to get um, out of here and try to kill it with something else. But at this point, I just wanted the Ghastly out of the way because it does surprisingly have a lot of attacking power. So there goes the muck. Unfortunately, but he did some decent work. Paralyzed the... Or not paralyzed. Poisoned the Torterra earlier on in the match, so can't be too too upset and I know he's got the Mantine left and I've got Rotom so I'm really not worried with Muck going down could just come straight in with that Rotom and go for the Thunderbolt Mantine is not surviving that and even if it is a salt vest I was specs so that it should mostly cancel it out and by mostly I mean cancel it out so like I said uh, not the greatest match basically just because I brought just the cream of the crop for PU, but the main reason that I wanted to post this was just because I wanted to uh, share this with you guys. I am going to be doing some PU battles once I get some different Pokemon and can make some some better teams that aren't necessarily like this. So, because I would love to do some experimentation and run some things like what he's running, because that is just, I mean, look at that team. It's it's beautiful. It's colorful. It's creative. I, I don't know what else to say. So. I will definitely put a link to uh, Dundeal's channel in the description below so you guys can check him out. He does all kinds of showdown stuff. He does Wi-Fi battles sometimes as well, and uh, he's huge into the PU stuff. So if you have any questions, um, and I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. But if I can't, you can always uh, reach him on Twitter as well. So yeah, all the, all the necessary links will be in the description below. But thank you guys very much for watching, and uh, hopefully... We will have another PU battle up soon. I do have one more, so hopefully I can narrate that soon for you guys. Anyway, that's it for this time, guys. I will see you for the next battle. Until then, game on.